know what the past year looked like for you. I don't know if it was messy or amazing or incredible or destructive, but this is what I know. God has something for you today. God has something for you in the year ahead. I don't know what that is. I have no idea. But I know this, if you have the breath of life in you today, which I think most of you probably hopefully do, then God has a purpose for you and God has a plan for you. And so we step into 2023 looking, keeping our eyes open for what God is doing in our lives, shaping us, transforming our lives as we talk about here at Timothy and seeking the good of our neighbor. So we will see what God does and we will rejoice with you throughout the year, but we're also here as a church family to pray alongside you and to care for you along the way. So thank you for being a part of our family. Um, With that, I kind of introduced myself, a little bit of our time today. I want to just invite you, people aren't super close today necessarily, but go ahead and stand and greet those around you with a New Year's blessing for a moment and we'll bring it back together in just a second. Happy New Year. Little ones stayed up all night, right? So you were too. It's one way to stay up. <laughs> Pre-bedtime naps. That's, that's good. As you make your way back to your seats, you can be seated for just a moment here. We got a couple things before we get going. First off, as we get rolling this morning, there's a few things I'll invite you to be a part of here if you can. First off, um, whether you grab the app and, and let us know you're here to worship with us or there's a card in front of you, perhaps in your bulletin, it's a way for us to connect with you, a way for us to pray for you. Um, and, and so I invite you to fill that out. If you're a guest today, it's not something we're going to spam you. That's not our purpose, our plan. But uh, it is helpful for us in many ways as a church to have that information. So let us know. Uh, put your name on a card, jump onto our Timothy app, which has got some great resources, and uh, you can throw the card into the offering plate. Don't throw your phone into the offering plate. That'd be cool, but uh, you can hang on to that. But on the back of that card, perhaps even more importantly, is a place for prayer. If something's going on in your life already, or, or something you're just thinking about moving into 2023, um, we'd love to join with you in prayer. If you'd like a prayer incorporated into our service today, um, hang on to that card. During the offering, I'll come around, and you can hold that card up, and I will grab that from you, and we will pray over that here today. Uh, If it's something you just want some prayer for in another way, shape, or form, uh, you want the pastors or our prayer team to join with you in prayer, you can just put that in the offering plate and mark that on there, and we certainly will join with you in prayer on that. So we also, if you're a guest today, we have a, a small little gift we give out. It's called, we call it a love book. It's got a little devotional, a little information about who we are. Our elders, ushers are coming down the aisles here in just a moment. If you'd like one of those, if you're a guest today and would like one, um, you can just give them a little wave. If you don't want to wave in front of everybody, you can catch one of these gentlemen or myself after service. We'd love to chat with you or get you that uh, if, if it's of any um, benefit or blessing to you. And with that, we just have one announcement here today. Um, So we are entering into the new year, and uh, one of the things we do here at Timothy is we gather our first fruits. And so next Sunday here at Timothy, we observe our first fruits Sunday. It's a day in which we, uh, that unfolds from the scriptures of the Old Testament where when the harvest was unfolding, that before anybody got anything, They took a portion, uh, the first 10% of the harvest, and they would just give it to the Lord. And and that happened, of course, with with cattle and and animals as well in different ways. But it was a time to go, Lord, because of the abundance of the blessings we know you're providing. See, there was a trust to know, okay, God's bringing the first harvest in. We know he's faithful. We know he will bring in the rest. And so we're going to right up front give back to the Lord. And so that's what it was all about. And so we try to pursue that in our own faith walk here at Timothy. And so next Sunday, we have an opportunity to do that and to uh, uh, give. So um, it's a special offering. 
uh, above and beyond your normal monthly giving or your monthly tithes uh, that you can bring and put forth. As we set our eyes on the work that God is calling to us to, that money will be used as we pursue ministry here and we try to get the gospel to the ends of the earth in our little portion of the world. So, love for you to take part of that. If you have any more questions, you can reach out to one of us. That's our announcements for today. Uh, With that, I'm going to invite you to please rise. And as you're rising here this morning, Pastor Rod will be down in just a little bit as we begin our time together. And one of the questions he's going to be talking with us about today is, who am I? An identity question. Who are we? What does God say about us? What do we say about ourselves? And we know that Jesus came into this earth, um, became one of us, so that we would know exactly who we are as children of God. And so Pastor Rod's going to unpack that for us here this morning in just a moment. But we're going to receive the invocation and begin our time in worship as we dive into this. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. We worship. As we gather this morning, we, we come to hear God's word, and, and it's sort of an unusual part of our service sometimes, because you just kind of sit there and listen, and, and oftentimes you've heard these things, and yet my prayer is that God would continue to open our ears and our hearts for what he has for us today. Uh, scripture tells us that God's word is living and active. It is sharper than any double-edged sword, and so God's word meets us today in these words from the book of Galatians. As we hear these words, we are reminded that not only did God promise us uh, a Savior, but He knew exactly when He was going to come. He knew exactly how it was going to unfold. And we get to see the beauty of God in all of this, in His plan as it unfolds, as Paul writes to us in Galatians chapter 4, starting at the fourth verse. But when the set time had fully come, God sent His Son born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. 
This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel lesson today comes from Matthew chapter two. It's another picture of God knowing what is unfolding and knew what was going to happen just as he does in this year ahead. He, he knows what's gonna unfold in your lives and my life. And, and so we see, especially in the gospel of Matthew, he picks up these Old Testament promises, these Old Testament prophecies that point us to the work that would unfold when Jesus came. And so we see another one of those today in the daunting text of, of the threats on Jesus's young life. And so we tune our hearts into Matthew chapter 2, starting at the 13th verse. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child, Jesus, and his mother, Mary, and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt, I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. When what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled, a voice is heard in Ramah weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, get up. Take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who were trying to take the child's life are now dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee and went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. This is the gospel of the Lord. See right there three times in that text if you caught it, God gave a prophecy in the Old Testament that was unfolded in the life of Christ, three of them. And it continues to be the case as we look through the Gospel of Matthew and little snippets throughout the year of what God did foretelling and unfolding the promises of Christ through his life, death, and resurrection. Upon hearing God's word this morning, we come to the Lord seeking forgiveness and grace, knowing that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, knowing that we have failed and fallen short. So I invite you to join with me today as we confess our sins to God. Let us confess our sin to God, our merciful Father. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We have turned away from each other in our thinking, speaking, and doing. We have done the evil you forbid and have not done the good you demand. We repent and are truly sorry for these our sins. Have mercy on us, kind Father, because of the obedience of our brother, Jesus Christ, your Son. Forgive us all that is past, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, move us to serve you faithfully. Set our feet upon the new path of life, Build your kingdom here through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Here's some good news to start your year. God has promised forgiveness to those who repent and return to him. May he keep you in his grace by the Holy Spirit. May he lead you to a greater faith and obedience and bring you to live with him forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Amen. Amen. We sing of God's praise, God's work. We sing God's praise for his work in our lives today as we remember who we are and as we tune our hearts into the message Pastor Rod will bring. I invite you to please rise as we join together in song this morning. That the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, his free indeed. Oh, my child. today not only does God have forgiveness for us in a verbal way he has forgiveness for us in a tangible way as we draw near to the table of the Lord and we begin preparing ourselves by that by confessing this God and who we worship who it is we gather around today I invite you to join with me as we confess the words of the Nicene Creed this morning I believe in one God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in all things
confess and it's trying in God, then we, we draw near as Paul, the Apostle Paul tells us, that we should prepare ourselves, examine ourselves, before we just kind of come to the table. This is for the family of God. And so this morning I'm going to ask you these four questions. I invite you to consider them and to answer them. If, if you answer in the yes, uh, I invite you to say that out loud this morning as we join together in this. Do you acknowledge that you are a sinner? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus is your personal Savior? Yes. Do you recognize that the true body and blood of Jesus is present in with the bread and wine which is given and shed for you? Do you believe that through this meal, God will strengthen your faith to amend your life? Yes. If you answered yes to all four of these questions and you join us in our confession of who this God is we worship, we welcome you to come to the table and to receive. If you're not sure where you're at on some of this, you're not even sure what you believe about God, that's okay. We're glad you're here because God meets you wherever you're at. You have two options, and that's the case. If, if that's you, you can come forward and receive a blessing for us. If you just kind of let us know, cross your hands in front of you. We love to extend a blessing as God continues his work in your life. Or you can stay in your seat and continue just worshiping us with song, whatever's comfortable for you this morning. For our young ones who have not been trained and, and talked about this yet, we invite them the same, to come forward and receive a blessing as God continues his work through their baptismal promises. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. After giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, then he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. You may be seated. Child is there. 
beginning one with God the Lord most high your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you are Christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a beautiful name it is nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus.
good, church. It's good. It's good to share in the table with you today. Receive the blessing of the Lord in that. Now may this body and this blood strengthen you and preserve you in body and soul. For at just the right time, Jesus came to bring salvation to you, that he might usher you into the kingdom of God. So depart in peace and in joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's join together in prayer. Oh God, the Father, you are the source of all goodness. In your loving kindness, you sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you for his sake. You have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. Always rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit so that we might be empowered to serve you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. With that, we take time to gather our tithes and offerings this morning. We'll do that here in just a moment. But if you also have a prayer request, this would be the time to hold that up. And I'll grab that this morning. And we can pray together, lifting our hearts and our hands and our needs and our joys before the Lord. We take this time to worship the Lord through our offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these gifts and those who have given. We thank you for the abundance of what you've poured out into our life. May we lead our lives in such a way, Lord, that we also give generously as you have taught us and showed us that others might come to know you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, there's one more. Sorry. Thank you, sir. All right, we do have a few prayer requests today we want to keep in prayer. Um, we have a prayer request uh, for, uh, with Denny for his wife Ruth uh, that she might get to feeling better struggling with something illness or otherwise uh, we want to join with um, prayer with Al as he, for comfort and wisdom and strength while caring for his aging parents we pray alongside him in those endeavors and challenges that many of us know we have a prayer of thanksgiving today for Karen Barbie. Many of you know Karen. She was a, 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 is connected here at Timothy. Um, she appears to be cancer-free after her surgery, so we rejoice in that. And we have a prayer for healing um, and as a test and, and things unfold at the hospital for Ed Campbell. So these things, if you happen to know any of these individuals, we encourage you to reach out. We will bring those before the Lord today as a family as we hand these to Jesus, trusting that he is the one who acts on our behalf. And so I invite you to please rise this morning as we join together in this time of prayer. I will end each petition this morning with the words, Lord, in your mercy, in which I invite you to respond. Hear our prayer for Jesus' sake. Lord, we thank you for our identities as your children. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, you poured out forgiveness of sins for all people. Through the waters of holy baptism, you claim us as your own. 
Help us to live out our identities so that the world around us may see your love at work in our lives each and every day. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that you would be with everyone who is feeling lost, alone, or struggling in any way, shape, or form. We especially pray for Ed as he awaits tests and asks for healing for him. We pray for Ruth that she also would find some healing in her body and mind during this time. We pray also with Al Fisher as he takes care of his aging parents. Bring comfort to his parents, but give Al the strength he needs each and every day to hold them and uplift them and provide for them as they need. Be their health, their help and healing in any way, Lord, that you see fit. We also, Lord, thank you for the abundance of blessings you pour out in our lives. Lord, we pray and give thanks with Karen Barbie that she is cancer-free following her surgery. Lord, your goodness is always abundant. As we look at this past year of 2022, Lord, we know there have been challenges. And yet, Lord, how many joys may we count? For each and every day, your mercies are new. For great is your faithfulness. Lord, may we see that also as we enter into 2023, that our hearts would be filled with thanksgiving in all the things you give us each and every day, even in the midst of hardships. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, be with President Lee Hagan of the Missouri District and all those others on staff. Grant them the wisdom they need to walk with us and help us with our mission of transforming lives through Christ. Be with all the congregations of the district that we may boldly proclaim Jesus and his death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. As we begin a new year, we thank you for the blessing of the previous year. We entrust the former year to you, Lord, knowing that you will work through everything that happened to your glory. We pray that you would be with us as we go forward into 2023. Be with our congregation. Help us to see opportunities you place before us to minister and serve those around us. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the way that you continue to feed our faith through word and sacrament. As we have received Jesus' body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine of this meal, Holy Communion, we pray that you would also bless us as we hear your word proclaimed. We entrust all of these prayers to you, confident that you will hear us and answer us. We bring all of this to you in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Pastor Rod Lindemann, thanks for getting here. Did you stay up all night? No. Did you go to bed at four? No. Huh, okay. I went to bed at 9 a.m. I did. Oh, what did you ask me? Oh, me? Oh, I'm tired. I'm tired. 9 a.m. <laughs> All right, so let's just, I, here's the thing. I was at Artie Mize, and it was really full. And I was amazed. I was like, how many people will really show up on New Year's morning, right, on a Sunday? And I asked the question. I realized that everybody that was at church at 9 a.m. had to be a part of the I didn't stay up till midnight club. And so I said, please raise your hand. And almost everyone over there raised their hand. So how many over here did not stay up till midnight? There we go. There we go. No, seriously, I was in bed at 9 p.m. and loved it. But thanks to my neighbors, I did celebrate at midnight. (laughs) I love them. They apparently love me. I don't know. It's hard to say. Well, this young man I read about, Manuel, would be sitting on the side of the street wondering where his next meal would come come from, thinking, my stomach hurts, and that happened ever since... An earthquake took his parents over in Haiti back in August of 2021. He would search around amongst the rubble in the cities, and he would look for food or clothes and go into the tent cities. Really, can you imagine 
what his life might be like if somebody from America would adopt him to help change his life. Where Manuel perhaps would know where his next meal is coming from, where he would go to sleep in a nice, soft, comfortable bed. Or where he would be clothed. Today, as you know, as we talked about in our reading, kind of this theme is being a child of God, this adoption. You have been adopted. You've been adopted by our loving Father. An amazing adoption. An international adoption. They're wonderful things. I love it. I see my friends right in front of me who have been adopted, and I love them guys so much. And it can be an expensive process, but your adoption comes at a much greater cost. Your adoption came at the life of Jesus Christ. And what a blessing it is as we gather today to celebrate our adoption into sonship, into God's family, as we enter into 2023. That God himself on the cross redeemed us, bought us back from sin. And so today, as we go into 2023, we rejoice and celebrate. As I was looking at Facebook the last couple of days, it was kind of sad, and yet there were some happy things. But I noticed a lot of stuff on there was talking about all the negative of 2022, and they couldn't wait until the year ended. But that seems to be the same thing that happened in 2021. I can't wait for 2022. And Lord knows that happened in 2020. We needed that year to go away, and I can't wait. And now here it is, 2023, and I'm reading the same things. Man, 2022 was the absolute pits. What am I looking forward to as we go into the new year? What is a good goal? What is something that... I can look at. Today I want to challenge you to rejoice in the amazing gift that God has given you as an adopted child into God's family. We can rejoice in his blessings. There's three things I want to talk about today in this adoption. To enjoy the blessings that we have as sons of God. And the first one is is that we rejoice in the Father's plan. In the reading today from the book of Galatians, it said, But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. When the set time had fully come, God already had a plan from the time of Adam and Eve, when they sinned, when they ate of that tree of good and evil, When they brought sin into our world, God already had a plan to redeem us. When he talked about in Genesis 3 about the battle between the serpent and the baby of Mary would come. God already had a plan that was told about, that was prophesied about, that came through the family of Abraham, through Jacob, through the tribe of Judah, through the kingdom of David, and on and on, all the way to when we celebrated last week to this baby that came in a manger. God had a plan, and we rejoice over that plan. What a powerful thing for us to celebrate that God loved us that much. But why, right? Why did God put his plan into action? To redeem you. To buy you back from sin. I mean, we just fall to sin. By nature, we are sinful people. We rebel against God. We are told we are enemies of God because of our sin. We are under the law, and when we look at that law, when we look in the mirror, we see ourselves in the reality of sin. And it points us to death and who we really are. Are. And so God had a plan, a time set that he would take care of us. Yeah, we're stuck in those short-term pleasures of sin, 
We think that we can handle it on our own, that maybe we can live that right life, that we can live a pleasing life to God, but he knew we couldn't do it. He had to have a plan to save us, to redeem us, to buy us back from that mess. And so he took our place on the cross to redeem us, to save us. He willingly took the sins of the world upon himself. You know this. You've heard this. But sometimes in life we get so busy, the world distracts us that we forget about it. And we read these scripture readings and we're reminded of what God has done for us. And so when we enter into the new year, into 2023, we get to rejoice about God's plan. We get to rejoice about what God has done to us, for us. We rejoice that He put Jesus on the cross for us. You rejoice that you just Receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Even though we live in a world that's filled with chaos and a mess, today we rejoice that God put His plan into action. God, the Father, did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for all of us, you, So that in him we have the full rights of sons, adoption, into the Father's plan. Isn't that powerful? That's amazing stuff. You have been redeemed. Can we get tired of hearing that? No! We celebrate Easter every week when we gather to church That Jesus not only went to the cross, but that He rose from the grave. That He brought us back from death. We celebrate it. We hear it. We need to be reminded of it. And as we enter into the new year, we don't look at the gloom and doom of everything that's going on, but rejoice in the Father's plan. Rejoice that you are sons of God in the family As a believer, we are all adopted sons of God. He calls you a son of God whether you are a man, a woman, or a child. When when God our Father, Abba Father, looks at you, He sees Jesus through the blood. He sees you as this righteous, amazing person. He sees you as Christ, and so He can call you His son because that's who He sees, Jesus God sees Jesus in you. So when it doesn't matter if you are a male or a female, you are a son of the Father when we read this in the Bible. God's child. It's amazing when we think about these waters of holy baptism and what those waters do through the Word of God when the Holy Spirit is received. And that promise, that gift of the Holy Spirit that we are a child of God, that we are united with Him, that we are a part of His family, that God calls us by name. You are a son of God, and we get to rejoice. We rejoice going into 2023 knowing that we are a son of God with that kind of excitement. I love it. I love it. We rejoice, and it's fun. But it is a struggle, isn't it, sometimes? The struggles in life. I mean, our world and the stuff that's going on overshadows and takes over sometimes. When you look at the news, when you look at everything that's going on, I was just kind of looking at the stock market and the news about it yesterday, and it says, you know, for the S&P 500, I think it said it was the worst it's been since 2008 or something like that, and that's really a downer, and you're like, oh my gosh. And then you read news that, wow, this year could be a great year now, or it could be worse, and we don't know, and our mind gets tumbled up. We don't know what to do, 
and then we read about all this other stuff that's crazy and going on, and it distracts us. It draws us away. That's how Satan works. It draws us away from rejoicing that we're sons of God, that we're children of God, that God cares for us, that God clothes us, that God takes care of our needs. We can easily get distracted from those things that we have been truly set free from this stuff. So we rejoice. But there's a beauty of being a son of God is that we get to call out to the Father. He gives us that privilege. What an amazing relationship we have with God as his children. We we can cry out, as Paul says, Abba, Father. That intimate relationship. Now we know that in our world, perhaps there are times where the child-father relationship may be not perfect. We're not perfect in this earth. But our heavenly Father is, and he loves us so much that he gave that ultimate sacrifice in his Son that he paved the way for us, opened that door for us to call out through the power of the Holy Spirit that Jesus left for us, in us. Abba, Father. When he calls us to prayer, to speak to him. And the Holy Spirit will even fill us with words that we don't even know what to pray for at times. We'll speak on our behalf. So as we face this turmoil in the world, as our lives may feel like they're a wreck, things in our lives don't make sense. We're going through something that's just mind-blowing, perhaps, and I don't know what the next step is. I don't know where I'm going to. We get to cry out, Abba, Father. What a powerful thing that is. And we know with all circumstance, without any doubt, that God hears us, that God hears you. When you speak to him, the doors are open wide. And so we speak to him. And you know this already. You know this. But we need to be reminded. And that's what's wonderful about this text today, is that we are reminded of these gifts that God gives us, this blessing that we have, being adopted into the family of God. We are reminded of these amazing blessings, of this Father's plan for us. As we go into the new year, He doesn't leave us wandering around. God already has a plan. God already knows where He's going with it. God already sent His Son. We celebrated last week the birth of the baby. Today our reading talked about in the gospel how two years later Herod wanted to kill the baby. But God protected that. He already knew. He had a plan. They followed the plan. We open ourselves up to the Spirit, to His listening, and we follow God's plan. We follow that plan into 2023 as we live our lives, as we rejoice in Him. But there's something even greater as we live on in this life as the world distracts us, as things get in the way. And that is we rejoice and anticipate the Father's blessing. We celebrate. It's exciting stuff. We anticipate as the Father lifts our eyes up to the sky and we we rejoice at what is yet to come. Because we definitely celebrate that the baby came in a manger. We celebrate that Jesus walked among us teaching, healing, showing us his power. We celebrate that Jesus died for us, that he went to the cross. We celebrate that agonizing pain that he took upon himself. We celebrate that he rose on the third day. We celebrate that stuff. But we celebrate that that is not the end. Christ is coming back. We look forward to that. We look forward to that as we enter into this new year. We don't look and worry about all the gloom and dew when our Father already has a plan that His Son will return, that we have been redeemed, that He will call us all together. 
And so he says to us, so you are no longer a slave to sin. We have been set free. But God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. You are no longer a slave to sin and eternal death. You have been set free. We move forward in this life knowing that God has a plan and through the gift of baptism and faith that we have received an inheritance. And even the apostles himself understand that that back in that time, inheritances were given to the males. Which is why they talk about how sons is all-inclusive. It's men and women. You are all sons. You are all heirs to God's kingdom, to God's gifts. You, each, are sons of God. We can't get tired of hearing it or knowing it because the world wants to distract us from it. You are no longer a slave since you are a son. That's good news, amen? It is good news. It's great news that we get to go in and take into 2023 as we live, that we get to anticipate God's plan, that this life is not the end. As we celebrate life today, as we celebrate the life that we'll have eternally with Christ forever in heaven, that we celebrate the life when God, Jesus, returns. An inheritance, a promise that is given to each one of us. You know that. But we have to be reminded of that because we just lose sight of it sometimes. We allow ourselves to get drifted, to fall away from it. And so we we forget about it. Or maybe we don't really forget about it, but it's just not right here. And so we allow the junk of the world to, to draw us away. Today we celebrate the first day of 2023 with a new goal. To rejoice. To rejoice in the plan that God has has given to us. We rejoice in the gift and blessings that God has given us through His Son, Jesus Christ. Today I send you home really with three things to kind of remember as as takeaways, if you will, from today's reading from Galatians. The first one is to rejoice in the Father's plan for you as you go out. Rejoice in the Father's plan for you as you celebrate the new year. Whatever is going on, it doesn't matter. Because you call out by your Father through His Spirit. Call out to God with whatever's going on in your life. He promises He'll answer you in the best way for you. Call out to Him as you rejoice in the Father's plan for you. And anticipate your Father's inheritance that was given for you. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's basic stuff we understand. We all know it. But we need to get excited about it. We need to go into the new year. Praising God for it. And celebrating for it. You are redeemed by Christ. Say these words, I am redeemed by Christ. Ready? I am redeemed by Christ. Amen. Let us go out in his peace. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Rod. A great way to start the year indeed. Right? The cost has been paid, the price has been paid, and we walk in freedom. Um, 
As we get ready to head out this morning, uh, you're going to be getting a card. One of the things we've been doing here as part of our prayer focus, which is, all, if, you haven't, if you don't know, we haven't forgot about that. We, we're continuing to pursue prayer here at Timothy right now during this season. And so we're going to have a series coming up pretty soon. We're going to start talking about prayer pretty soon again. It's going to carry us through the Lenten season as the Lord leads us into the next thing he's calling us to as a church. One of the things that we've committed to is praying for the, the organizations we tithe to as a church. Church, we, we believe it's important for us to be generous with what we have also, whether that's our lives and servitude or, or even our finances. And so we pursue ways in which we can support others. Uh, one of the areas we support is the Missouri District of the LCMS. If you're not familiar with how the church body works, we are, we are a synod. We have option to be a part of this body of believers, and we are. And because we're a part of that body, we support some of the things that the district is doing and the overall synod is is doing, which helps us continue ministry, to grow in faith, to shape our pastors, new pastors, as well as the three of us who serve here and uh, other staff members in different areas. And so we prayed for uh, President Hagen today, but we invite you to continue joining us in prayer for the Missouri District. And uh, there's some options on here, things on here that you can be in prayer for. So you'll get that on the way out. Put that somewhere where you can remember and uh, just be in prayer, even if it's just once a week for five seconds. Uh, we join in prayer where our tithes are going as the Lord uses us in that too. With that, we're going to rise. I invite you to please rise as we go out in song and joy today. And uh, I pray that you have a blessed new year as we gather here time and time again to worship our creator and God. We sing. Enjoy it.